In this tutorial, I'm going to explain how I made the graphs that I used for the simulation for the coronavirus. And I used it, and I used the program called MATLAB to run the simulations. MATLAB is an expensive program, so if your school doesn't provide for it, maybe it's a good idea to use these ideas here and translate it to R or Python and then run your simulations in a free software. So what I did was, first of all, I cleared everything in my working directory so that nothing gets bogged down. And then I set the parameters. These parameters could be found online. And these are early estimates because the, the, there aren't that many uh, good estimates for... I mean, the range for the pre-infectious period and the duration are huge, but these are just estimates because uh, actually we... WHO just declared the coronavirus a pandemic. And so later on, these values might change, but this is the best thing that we have for now. The pre-infectious period is the duration that we spend between the uh, when we first get infected so that our susceptible person becomes exposed and the duration that they spend in that E group will be the pre-infectious period. So after 5.2 days, they're going to leave the E group and go into the I group where they will spend seven days as an infectious person and then go into recovery. And I took the multiplicative reciprocals of each value and these will be the rates at which people leave the groups E and I. The R0 is estimated to be at around 2.2. As a reminder, R0 is the number of people that a single infected person will infect in a totally susceptible population. This totally susceptible population is actually an important adjective, totally susceptible, because as time goes on, there will be less and less susceptible people in the population, and so uh, the person with the same disease might infect less people. So this not, this is zero, stands for uh, the initial value. I used the population of Russia in 2020. I just Googled this and I labeled it as N. And because I know N and the duration and the R0, I can use the equation here and calculate the beta. Beta was the contact rate. And there's a bit of a circular reasoning here because actually R0 is defined to be the population times the duration times beta. But... For now, this is a prediction, and so uh, there might be better ways to model this, but this is just a simple way to take care of our problem here. Okay, and now we go on to the differential equations. We want to observe what happens over the next year, and so I made a time span that goes from 0 to 365, and this one means we're going by one day. And so there are going to be 365 days here that we're going to observe. And I created an initial value matrix called Y0. And this is going to be a matrix where the columns are going to be susceptible, exposed, infectious, recovered, and dead. And these are initial values that I found on the uh, Worldometer's website as of March 12th. So 25 people were infected, 3 were recovered, and the rest of the population I'm just going to assume are susceptible. So now what we have to do is we have to observe what happens to this matrix. We were going to add on columns onto here and see what happens over the course of a year. To do that, we're going to use differential equations, and luckily MATLAB has a differential equation solver called ODE45. This is built in, and any numerical analysis course will talk about this solver called ODE45, which is a very accurate solver. But this is built in in MATLAB. It might, it's not built in, it built in for R or Python, and so you're going to have to download packages to run the same code. 
So let's take a look at what we're trying to do. What we're doing is that we're running the initial value over the time span through our differential equations. The time span we know, we defined it here. And the why not, we defined here. This ODE fun simple means ODE function, and simple is just the name I gave it, is going to be defined here. This is a function I defined. So what this does is that it takes in the T and the Y and the beta, which is the contact rate, and it gives an output of the change, the dy dt. So our output is going to be another matrix, the change, ds, de, di, dr, and dd, which I define to be uh, negative beta times i times s and, and so on. Uh, these should look familiar because I covered them in my first video. If you look at the bottom right white columns or white boxes, then you can see that the SDT is negative lambda ST, and lambda was the force of infection that it's written in yellow here. It's beta times I. And so uh, DS would be beta times I, which is lambda times S. And this gets subtracted from our S values, and it gets added to our E column. And from our E column, we have this many people leaving at any moment, and they flow into the I. From the I, we have recovery as well as death. The death rate for the coronavirus as of March 2020 was again about 3.4%, and so I left it here. And so this is going to give us an output. So if we run the code, then, okay, let, let's try and run everything. So clear, uh, set the parameters. You notice that the parameters show up on the right-hand side. And then I'm going to run the differential equations. And once I run it, then I get a matrix that's 366 rows wide, uh, rows down, and five columns wide. So if I click this, then what I'm going to have is, first of all, on day one, I'm going to start with my initial parameters. Uh, so most people are susceptible. Not many people are infected. Uh, 25 infectious people, three recovered, and no deaths. And we're going to run this code by each day. And I thought it was interesting because I we predicted the in we predicted about six or seven people to get infected. And actually, looking at the count today, we, then we see Russia has six people added here. And so I thought that was kind of interesting. Anyway, we're going to run this for a period of 365 days, and what we end up with is this whole, uh, this whole matrix of information. And now all we have to do is we have to plot this. It's very easy to plot in MATLAB because it's built in. So plotting, I don't think I have to explain. Uh, just plot everything, change the font, change the marker size, label, label the x-axis and the y-axis, make a title, and make things look nice. Set the font size to whatever looks nice on the video, and save the image as whatever, so that we can uh, refer to it later on. And this saves it onto our computer. So we're going to try and run it without saving it. So I commented out the save as part. So if I run it, then, oh, it doesn't look good because it's not full screen. But once I make it full screen, then we get the exact same graph that I showed you in my videos. So this is for what happens when 
nothing changes, when there is no government policy. Now we're going to look at what happens when there is policy. How do I model that? Well, it's simple. The idea was to change uh, the beta value and where the policy is to reduce the contact by two, by, by half. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, for example, I gave you an example of running for 120 days before, before we implement the policy. And for the next span of time, we're going to run the same OD45 solver with a beta value that's halved. And what we're going to do is we're going to have two of these matrices and then we're just going to combine them, right? And I commented this out because it takes a long time to plot, but right now we might need it again. So if I press this, then it gets rid of, it uncomments things. So that's the idea here. Uh, we just split it up into two different times and then combine it together. And the key idea is that in the second time, the beta gets reduced by half for whatever reason, maybe due to policy or just uh, more hand, sand, hand, hand sanitizer or just general caution and awareness. And so once we run this one, this clears everything and so it should work. This one gives us a different looking graph. Uh, we can see that more people stay susceptible, which means they did not they do not contact the disease by the time that uh, the infectious population reaches zero, and there are fewer deaths and uh, fewer recoveries as well because they never had to contact the the coronavirus in the first place. So this is it for the tutorial, and in future videos I might make some more information. I might talk more about maybe the R0 value or the contact parameter as well. Okay, thank you.